Today we're going to explore the idea, what if you could use any planeswalker as your commander? Let's start it off with Narset, Pard Reveals, for a blue, blue, one generic. We've got the pl we've got the Planeswalker at five loyalty. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. Like, wasn't Hull Breacher banned because of this? This, like, this ability? Because of its abuse with the wheel effect? So you, like, use Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune combination with Narset. Oh, no, you can't use Wheel of Fortune. Ah, oh, gotta stay in that blue color identity. But at least you get to still use the Time Twister. You can even look for Time Twister with this thing. Minus two, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them and put them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Would be deadly! What other cards actually could be abused with Narset? Not to mention, like, it would just peeve off everyone. I mean, everyone wants to draw cards, right? And then no one will be able to do it. Windfall, that's a good one. So we got, like, Time Twister. We got the Windfall. Yeah, Windfall is a good one. Each player discards their hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. I'm sure there's more as well. The, um, the possibilities for the Nar set. So this topic is about Oathbreaker. I'm actually not really familiar with that format. I'm assuming, I guess, you can use plane. Oh, you could use Planeswalkers as a commander, and then a special spell, something, something to that effect. So uh, Narset Part of Veils probably would be one of the tier one commanders uh, in such a format, especially since it's it it dig and it calls to dig for combo cards so it can dig for combo cards i guess the downside is you have to be mono blue you gotta be mono blue you gotta by be, be in be in the way of the blue okay approaching calamity with the super chat morning nerds my pick is tezzeret master of the bridge because affinity is affinity very good though in uh in commander I don't know, maybe it is. It's an absolute atrocity in all the, the 1v, 1v1 formats. Okay, so Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge. Black, blue, four generic for a five loyalty creature. And Planeswalker spells you cast have affinity for artifacts. Well, that's fantastic. And the creatures. So, plus two, Tezzeret, Master of the Bridge deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of artifacts you control. You gain X life. Minus three, return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. That could be broken. That could definitely be broken. And minus eight, exile the top ten cards of your library. Put the artifact cards from among them onto the battlefield. How would you abuse this? Outside of, well, I mean, if you could gain some chain going of whenever you cast spells, you draw cards, and you just keep spewing the cards back onto the battlefield. Good colors! You got the Thoracle colors, you know, Demonic Consultation into your Thassa's Oracle, just in case, you know, just in case. I don't, I don't understand why you'd be a Deme in Demir in Commander and not have that combo just waiting in the weeds somewhere. That's, but that's just me. That's just me. We've got Gunblade Knight, Tamiyo Moonsage, or Field Researcher. So we're coming out hot with, I think, Fair Planeswalkers? Tamiyo, not broken. Blue, blue, three generic for a four, uh, four loyalty Planeswalker. Plus one, tap target permanent. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Tap down that land, or that blocker. That's actually a pretty good political card. Okay, tap down your one, I don't know, that Gazoa card. You know, the thing that absorbs all the damage. All right, go get him. Go get him. Minus two, draw a card for each tap creature target player controls. Oh my god! So it could be like five mana, draw seven. Because people are tapping out all the time. People are tapping out, attacking. The Tamiyo is actually insane. And then minus eight, you get an emblem with you have no maximum hand size. Whenever you put, whenever a card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, you may return it to your hand. I thought that was a pretty cool. That's a unique emblem. You don't see that everywhere. Michael says, better be able to uh, cast Planeswalker with tax again and again. Oh yeah, absolutely. All normal rules apply. 
All right, so uh, we got the ta we have Tamio. We'll, what do we got here? We've got that Shep though, Kiora Behemoth Beckoner. The Behemoth Beckoner. Oh, this one. You want the hybrid Simic, two generic, seven loyalty, Kiora. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. Not bad, not a bad card. And the ability minus one, untap target permanence. You got a little bit of ramp, uh, a little bit of ramp in there as well. Or you can actually attack, attack, and then go, get back on defense. Not a bad choice, not a bad choice. Okay, Team Super Friends MTG, which, you know, based on the name, you probably love the title of the show. Karn liberated and continuously spam until they concede. Karn liberated? You mean like exiling their hand? What are the abilities on Karn? Plus four target. It's only target player exiles a card from their hand. You know, I, I would think that it would it would be a like all players exile a card from their hand. Oh no, it's like we're all opponents. Anyway, so not everybody. Minus three exile target permanent. Or is the idea you just keep recasting this thing over and over again and keep exiling things on the battlefield? Is that your plan? Not because otherwise this this actually doesn't look like a very good commander card. You like slam your car and exile one thing, and then it's at like three loyalty, and boom, they get they the the, the it has no way of defending itself against three people. It's pretty fair. Michael, 100% pick Dak Fade in to disincentivize people from playing Soul Rings. Oh, well, you know what? If there's anything I've learned about Magic the Gathering, you can put all the hate cards you want in your deck. Uh, it will not disincentivize anyone to do anything. They just hope you don't. Well, that's the problem with Dak Faden. If they see it as your commander, I mean, you're definitely going to draw it. So red, blue, one generic, three loyalty, plus one. Target player draws two cards, then discards two cards. It's funny that it's target player. Give other people some cards. Minus two, gain control of target artifact. That soul ring is mine. Yeah, you're gonna steal. You're gonna have all the soul rings. Every, all of them. And you don't even mind if you lose all the loyalty. You just replay your Dak Faden later with the soul rings that you stole. For every soul ring that you steal, that's an extra, like, you know, that's extra commander tax that you can pay in the future. Who cares? Oh, you're gonna restart the game with Karn Liberated. Oh, God. This might get banned in. All planeswalkers are commander, commander. I forgot about the minus 14. Minus 14, restart the game, leaving in exile all non aura permanent cards exiled with Karn Liberated, then put those cards on the battlefield under your control. And you get, and you get, to, uh, no, but you lose the Karn Liberated. You lose the Karn Liberated. Okay, Abzo, Teferi Time Raveler. Probably the most busted of them all. Teferi Time Raveler. Can anyone, does, can anyone, oh, Teferi. Where is my Time Raveler? There we are. The Teferi, blue, white, one generic, four loyalty. Each opponent can cast spells only any time they could cast a sorcery. I think this is like, a Stax player's wet dream if they could play this thing. Am I not right? I could be wrong. Maybe this effect is not the most important for them, but I would imagine that they would like this as their commander. Plus one until your next turn, you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash, and then minus three, return up to one target artifact creature enchantment to its owner's hand, draw a card. But the most important is the static ability. You guys only play at sorcery speed. Welcome to Hearthstone. Enjoy. Maybe Hearthstone players. Maybe they made this for the Hearthstone players. That never crossed my mind. Maybe to convert people from Hearthstone to Magic the Gathering, they gave us to Fairy Time Raveler. It was on purpose. Felino is a simple person. Just wants Jace the Mind Sculptor, that's all. Jace. Because this is not broken at all. I mean, I think this is just a very. It was very. It's very good one on one, but just like. Is a Planeswalker? Sorry, as a as like a as a planeswalker in EDH, I think it's underwhelming. I think maybe if you can recur to me over and over again as a commander, it'd be different. The plus two, you know, you fate seal somebody, big deal. 
zero draw. I mean, that's probably your best ability. Drawing three cards, put two cards back from your hand on top of your library in any order. And then minus one, return target creature to its owner's hand. And minus 12, exile all cards from target, only target player's library. So like, um, and then they shuffle their hand into their library. So not a busted commander. So if you'd want to do that, I think your play group would be A-OK -okay with that. The Palatopus. Oko because I want to lose my friends. Is Oko good? Seems like the thieves are overpowered in this game. Is Oko is Oko good in Commander? Period. Blue green one generic four loyalty. I'll admit, like this is pretty good. Like it's not bad. All the creatures, whatever they play, if they don't have haste, they're just turning into elks. And you know, plus two to make a token so it can defend itself relatively well. And it might, and this minus five might even be relevant as well. I have I have no idea. Oko is definitely good. Oko doesn't need friends. Only elk. Yes. The elk are his friends. Simple as that. Yeah, okay, I, I, I can see it. Oko, Thief of Crowns could be busted as a as a commander. David Willard with the super chat. Today's my birthday and I love your streams. Nissa World Waker and happy birthday, David. Okay, Nissa World Waker. This is a classic. Green, green, three generic for a three loyalty planeswalker. Plus one target land, you control becomes a 4-4 four, four elemental creature with trample. It's still land! Plus one, untap up to four target forests. Wow! Four forests? So basically, playing this thing is almost- well, assuming you played it with- assuming you play your Nissa with forests, this card is almost free to cast. And then minus seven, search your library for any number of basic land cards. Put them out to the battlefield. Then shuffle your library. Those lands become 4-4 four, four elemental creature with trample. There's still lands. Oh, good God. And the first two abilities are plus abilities. See, this is how I think Planeswalkers should be designed. If they've got this really high loyalty that's, like, impossible to get to, you just... You, they, they, the, 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 both abilities are plus abilities. Make Give them a chance at uh, going, going big with their Planeswalker. Anyway, interesting suggestion. Interesting suggestion. We got a approaching calamity. Oko is good because the best commander removal is stripping abilities. The best command. Oh, really? So basically turning all the abilities off. All right. So that's an elk. Goodbye ability. Oh, no more static ability for you. Okay, no big creature. Nope. It, it's nothing. Oh, you had activated abilities? Well, here, here's an elk. Enjoy your elk. <laughs> that's right, Shaman is a planeswalker, right? Only in spirit. Uh, what do we got here? Let's go with Mirin. Sa oh, Sahili would be broken. There we go. I was waiting to see who would choose the broken. Oh no, maybe not this one is not broken. This one, like, would it break anything? Does it combo with anything outside of Felidar Guardian? I don't think so. I was thinking you were thinking of the, I thought you were going to choose the other Sahili, the one where if you cast instants and sorceries, you get like a token. Which I think is which I think is broken actually, but I won't bring it up because no one else no one suggested it yet. But anyway, red, blue, one generic for a three loyalty. Planeswalker plus one scry one. Deal a damage to each opponent. Alright, the clock is on. The 40 turn clock. No one likes getting pinged by Sahili Rai. Then minus two credit token, that's a copy of target artifact, creature, artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. The token gains haste. And you want to blink the Felidar Guardian. You blink the Felidar, but you gotta go find the Felidar Guardian. Where's your Felidar Guardian? That's the problem. It's pretty poopy planeswalk. I mean, you're in blue and red, so you could dig pretty deep for it, so I guess it's possible. We got Kyle Driver here, Vivian of the Hunt. And while we look at Viv before we look at Vivian in the hunt, which I can't find because maybe I spelt Vivian wrong. Vivian of the hunt. What am I doing wrong, Kyle? It's, pro it's probably Vivian of Vivian. We're gonna look at all the Vivians. <laughs> Gotta do this the old the Vivian on the hunt, on the hunt. Okay, before we look at Vivian on the Hunt, we gotta thank our sponsors, FusionGamingOnline.com. 
Fusion! Oh, Fusion's gonna have a 1k RCQ this weekend. I gotta be prepared! I'm refoiling up my deck, so I got myself a nice, beautiful foil fluster storm. You know how. And it wasn't that expensive. You know why? Because I use coupon code Nikachu at checkout for 5% off all my purchases. When you use coupon code Nikachu, it lets them know I sent you. And I guess it let them know I sent myself. And it also gets you 5% off whenever you're buying at FusionGamingOnline.com. Foil your, foil your deck out today. And we're also going to thank Manitrade. It's the premier place for renting magic cards online. Also... Uh, Magic the Gathering Online, the place where foils are worthless. But they won't send you foils because they're ugly. They'll send you regular looking cards. You want to play any format? You go for it! Play that popper. Be brave. You don't have to buy into it. You just rent with it. Rent it with Mana Traders. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below. Or use coupon code Nikachu underscore WS2 for 10% off your first two months. And now back to Vivian on the hunt. We were on the hunt for Vivian. We couldn't even find it. Vivian, where have you been our whole lives? You couldn't even use Felidar Guardian? Oh, it doesn't even work! Yeah, it's the same thing I thought with, um... What's it called? Uh, yeah, getting back to Sihili Rai, I couldn't play with Wheel of Fortune with Narset because Narset is blue. The color identity has to be blue. So actually, you're screwed on this combo. I'm sure there's a lot of people uh, in the description, or so in the comments section. Like, that's, that's impossible. You're right. So this is just a garbage planeswalker. So this one don't this one don't work. Not a good commander. Or wouldn't work wouldn't work as a good commander. Okay, Vivian on the hunt. We're on the hunt for Vivian. No, we found her. All right, green, green, four generic for a four loyalty planeswalker. Plus two, you can sack a creature. Search your library for a creature card with mana value equal to one plus the sacked creature's mana value. Put onto the battlefield. Oh, so it's a birthing pod. Plus one, mill five cards. Put any number of creature cards milled this way into your hand. Not bad. And negative one, create a four, four green rhino warrior to creature token. These planeswalker abilities are very cheap. They're very, very cheap. I guess I guess that's what you get for a six loyal uh, for a six mana planeswalker. Yeah, literally birthing pod. Okay, right, we got a bunch of super chats. Gotta get through them. Uh David with the super chat. I play her in my red green deck alongside Nissa who shakes the world. What was the last one? Who is her? Or unless you're talking about Vivian. Oh, you're talking about Nissa Worldbreaker. I assume so. You play in a re red green deck alongside Nissa Usha. You like you like you like Nissa Tribal, I'm guessing. You're a huge fan of Nissa Tribal, so we have Nissa Worldbreaker, Nissa who shakes the world. Like this is the one I thought you were saying in the first place. Um, I wasn't expecting this. I guess this is the old-fashioned Nissa. Then there's Nissa who shakes the world. Green, green, three generic, five loyalty. Whenever you tap a force for mana, add an additional green. That's that's really good. I imagine that's really good in Commander. Uh, plus one, tap three, pl tap. Oh, sorry, put three plus one plus one counters on up to one target non-creature land you control. Untap it becomes a zero zero elemental, and then minus eight. Uh, in emblem, lands you control have indestructible. Search your library for any number of forest cards. Put them onto the battlefield. Tap, then shuffle your library. Nissa, master of forests. Essentially. Okay, what do we got next? Um, we've got bruh moment. Bruh. What happened to Millmaster? Also can show... Yeah, where is Millmaster? Also, can one show be called if I was in charge of Magic the Gathering for today, I'll add or... That's a great idea, bro. moment. Gonna put that. If I was in charge of Magic the Gathering for a day. I love that. It's a great idea. If I was... In, if I was in charge of Magic the Gathering... If I was in charge of Magic for a day... <laughs> we could print some more secret layers. Anyway, great suggestion. Thanks so much. 
All right, uh, Mr. Deadhead. The first planeswalkers, vanguards. They all have names. They should be uh, van, vanguards. I don't know the first planeswalkers. I think maybe I know Jace. Jace Bell. I think Jace Bellerin was the first planeswalker. Bellerin. But I don't know the flame. I don't know the all the other first planeswalkers. I only know this one because I actually played this one in standard at the time. Good old Lorwyn. These are the first planeswalkers, right? Blue, blue, one generic, three mana. It's Jace. It's a blue planeswalker. Plus two. Each player draws a card. Negative one. Target player draws a card. And by the way, I only played this at the time because it was a count at the time with the planeswalker rules or the legendary rule at the time. It was a way of killing a Jace, the mind sculptor the day deal it was it's an old rule it, it's not like this anymore but back in the day if if the planeswalkers had the same name and you you had a jace and then i played a jace they would cancel each other out and they both blow up because you can't have two jaces on the battlefield that don't make sense but anyway that's uh that's how it was back then these days both players can have a legendary for, from both sides so I can have, you can have your Jace, I can have my Jace, and Jace Bellerin, don't blow up Jace the Mind Sculptor anymore. Kyle Driver. Uh, I like her for abs and self-mill. This is a bit late. I'm guessing Nissa World Waker? Abs and self-mill. Or Nith, or maybe Vivian of the Hunt. Okay, triple three with the super chat. Asha, Dream Render, and everyone unfriend you. Isn't it the truth? All right, so Demir, uh, are you allowed to play this? Are there any hybrid mana? I don't understand the rules around hybrid mana. Oh, the hybrid, you have to be in both both identities, I think, that's the real, that's the deal. So I guess that's fine as commander. Okay, hybrid, Demir, Demir, one generic, uh, five loyalty, spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause their controller to search their library. Oh yeah, that's sickening, minus one target. Player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard, then exile each opponent's graveyard. Fa absolutely fantastic. And screwing everyone over! Because everyone's going to search their library. But, you know, the person with all the fetch lands are completely... They're going to get extra screwed. Oh, you like your fetch lands? You think you want to show off all that money of yours? Enjoy all the fetch lands you can! Ashia, Dream Render, boom. Also, please look up vanguards. I don't know what vanguards are. Van. Hold on. What do I look? Vanguards. I see some weird Call of Duty stuff when I look it up. Anyway, so. Not related to Magic the Gathering. Uh, okay, oh, I gotta get. I have so many super chats. Don't wanna miss any of them. We got next David Williams. Plus one, plus one mastery with backup. My commander is H Hal Halana and, and Elena, partner. Well, we're trying to explore. I mean, you could show this one off. That's no problem. Or they are actually, oh, they're actually, I thought this was using the partner mechanic. And this actually uses, it actually says partners at the top. Was there any, anything else? That's not a planeswalker though. But thank you very much for your super chat. First strike reach at the beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control, but not a planeswalker. I thought, I thought you meant like you were playing with the commanders that have partner, which means you can play them. I think. Is that how it works? Anyway. Uh, what else we got here? Okay, we got, we got through all the super chats. Vanguard. Oh, wait. Vanguard. I've been spelling this wrong. Vanguard. I don't... There's nothing here. What are you, what are you guys trying to do here? No, they're... No, they're vanguards. They're not as, but are. Please, I'm not looking them up. <laughs> Don't derail the show. We got Gunblade Knight that's back with uh, Chandra Awakened Inferno. Chandra Awakened Inferno. Uh, what does this do? Best part is the emblems don't leave if you die. Oh yeah, that one. 
This planeswalker, okay, so this planeswalker can't be countered, so you be screwed. And then plus two, each opponent gets an emblem. That's great, you went straight to eight. At the beginning of your upkeep, this emblem deals one damage to you, so every single turn, you make this cumulative. Uh, minus three, it deals three damage to each non-elemental creature, and minus X, Chandra's Awakened Inferno deals X damage to target creature or player if a planeswalker... Sorry, if a permanent dealt uh, is dealt damage this way this turn, uh, it exile it instead. This is a pretty sick commander. You could ramp this out on like turn three and then start plus twoing. And before you know it, your opponents are on like a really short lifeline. Vanguard is a game type of MTG. Well, yeah, so T Vanguard, Vanguard. <laughs> They're taking the hobbits to Vanguard. Everyone's so obsessed with Vanguard for some reason. Oh, this? Hold on. Is this what he wanted so badly? I don't get it. These are like all avatars on Magic the Gathering Online. Look, we've got... Uh... We've got Avatar, we've got Braids, Conjure, Adept. I was that Avatar for eternity, but none of these are Planeswalkers. Anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> Zodiac Rooster is a Vanguard, Nikachu. Oh, that's great. <laughs> the Zodiac Rooster. Okay, David Willard. Um, oops, no, I got that one. I'm all, okay, David Will. no, David Willard was back, I was right. I've been super chatting so you could understand my play style. Oh, thank you very much, I appreciate it. <laughs> you like, hold on, so what, what, what did you like, what was your card again? So you like, you like Gruel, you're a Gruel fan. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put X counters. So you like Gruel and you like counters. All right, uh, Liquid Soulfy, Liliana Defiant Necromancer. This is a creature. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Is that a planeswalker as well? Okay. Counts. I guess. I guess this one counts. Liliana, heretic, heretical heal, healer. Uh, but I mean, okay. We're, we're going to assume that you can just cast this. No, how do you cast that side? This don't count. It's a creature. It's a creature. We're talking about if planeswalkers could be your commander. This thing can already be your commander. Anything, think bigger. We got Astro with Ral. Is it uh, Viceroy? Now we got the. Now we got the idea. See, this guy can't normally be your commander, but if he could, what would he be like? Red, blue, three generic for a five loyalty Ral. Plus one. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand, and the and the other into your graveyard. And minus three deals damage equal to target creature. Sorry. Deals damage to target creature equal to the number of instant or sorcery cards you own in exile in your graveyard. But not to player. You can't hit the player with that. And then minus eight. You get an emblem with uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, this emblem deals four damage to any target and you draw two cards. Holy moly. But you have to pull that one off. That's going to be hard. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. I did not with the Welder. Jace, Wielder of Mysteries for the Thor for a Thoracle deck. So, uh, but you'd have to find some alternative way of eating up your entire deck. Stuff like Paradigm Shift, I think thought uh was it thought lash thought lash so blue 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 one generic for a foil loyalty planeswalker but it says if you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it you win the game instead so you basically have like thoracle you have basically have thoracle as your planeswalker itself yeah in the command zone it's instead of having a thassa's oracle you just have a jace wielder of mysteries this seems completely broken but again, you are you are restricted to one color. Is that possible? I'm, I mean, I guess so. It's probably good enough. There'll be enough ways. There'll be enough ways to get rid of that library of yours. Now we're thinking. Now we're trying to break the game. I like it. Ah, Piotr. 
with uh if any planes are walker let's go urza academy headmaster oh god what is that like a that's like a isn't that a meme card yeah this is like a meme card all right red <laughs> it's a sil it's a silver border card we'll, we'll entertain it for a second so for wooberg we have urza uh head to ask urza.com and click plus one head to urza ask urza.com and click a minus one head to ask urza.com click minus six with uh ask urza.com is it still functional does it still work urza's fun house where's his planeswalker abilities uh sticker generator urza's fun house oh here we go you got, we go to ask urza.com for all sorts of stuff i gotta download it what are you kidding me what if i have to use this on my phone i can't ask urza at all that was disappointing how hard is it to just have a simple web app that generates planeswalker abilities unbelievable we got wah here Chandra, Acolyte of Flame, neat little spell slinger. I was totally disappointed on that Ask Urza thing. Uh, the, this, this uh, Urza Academy Headmaster should go down in value. Because you can't, e you can't even go to AskUrza.com and get the Planeswalker abilities. You have to download something first, refresh the page, and scroll down. Is it hard, is that, is it that hard to load? Oh, wait, maybe we got it, maybe we got it going. Oh, I can select these. Okay, select the loyalty ability you're using. I want a plus one. Distribute three counters among one, two, or three target creatures you control. What if I want to go minus one? That's got to be a good one, right? Target player puts the top ten cards of their library into their graveyard. And then minus six. This has got to be super busted. Exile old cards from target player's library. Then that player shuffles their hand into their library. Ooh, it's a... It's a Jace the Mind Sculptor. I want, is it just like all the minus sixes or is it, is it all the ultimates or is it deals 10 damage to target player or planeswalker and each creature that player? I have a feeling it's like all, it's just a random ultimate. I have a feeling. <laughs> you didn't give to the Urza page time to load. All right, we gave the Urza. I, some of you have gone to askurza.com before and it shows. I've, that was the first time for me. Chandra, Acolyte of Flame, red, red, one generic, uh, four loyalty planeswalker. Okay, so the, the neat thing about this thing is that the loyalty abilities are zero. So zero, put a loyalty counter on each red planeswalker you control. That sucks. Uh, zero, create two one one red elemental creature tokens. They gain haste, sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step. And then minus two, you may cast target instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard. If that card would be put into a graveyard, this turn exile it instead. This is a pretty garbage planeswalker for commander, if you ask me. Yeah, it sounds like it's a rand it was a random ultimate from the last one. This is terrible. I mean, if you want to run this, because you want to run haughty Chandra, I mean, go for it. But, like, I guess this is, you know, if you're going to be taking it easy on your playgroup, you play this Chandra. <laughs> Put a, I, I don't know, maybe it's a means of making all your other red planeswalkers stronger. All right, Alvarez with the Gol, uh, Vraska Golgari Queen. Vraska. The Queen. Ah, oh, yes. This one would be pretty sick. Green, black, two generic, four loyalty, plus two. You may sack another permanent. If you do, gain one life and draw a card. So you just sack a token or something. Minus three, destroy target non-land permanent. Convert mech cost three or less. But then we got the emblem, minus nine. You get an emblem with whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. So people can feel the wrath of this thing as it ticks up to ten loyalty. You go minus nine. And it's like, I'm coming for you. It's my unblockable creatures and everything. Yeah, because Chandra puts a loyalty counter on each red planeswalker it ups herself. Yes, it does. So this technically is like a plus one. But it doesn't go anywhere, really. Like, what are you going to do? Just minus two? It's just not, it doesn't really go anywhere, in my opinion. Oh, we got Nicol... Ni Lord Magic is always with a Nicol Bolas. Nicol Bolas... God Pharaoh. Fun, isn't that already? Oh no, that is not a plane. Yeah, that is not a creature. 
Uh, this would be an insane planeswalker. So red, black, blue, four generic, seven loyalty, plus two. Target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. Until end of turn, you may cast it. And then plus one. Each opponent exiles two cards from their hand. Oh my god. That would be so brutal. Each opponent exiles two cards from their hand. Minus four. Deal seven damage to target opponent. And it cre Hold on. Deal seven damage to target opponent, creature an opponent controls, or planeswalker an opponent controls. Then there's minus 12. Yeah, exile each non-land permit your opponents control. Just absolutely disgusting. Oh, I did say that Chandra was nice for a little spell slinger deck. All right, just for a nice for a little spell slinger deck. So what you're intending on burning your opponents to death? Bolt you, bolt you, bolt you. Chandra, acolyte of flame, minus two. I mean, you get. I guess you get to flashback everything, right? Chandra dies. You get like two flashbacks. Chandra dies. Chandra come back. Get to do it for forever. Donald's Doretti scraps uh, Savant. Planeswalkers could be your commander. Red, three generic, three, uh, three loyalty. Discard up to two cards, then draw that many cards. Is there any like looting combos in uh, commander? Minus two, sack an artifact. If you do, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's a strong ability. And then the minus 10, you get an emblem with whenever an artifact is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, return that card to the battlefield at the beginning of your next end step. But there's a whole, whoa, whoa, wait, this thing already can be your commander. And oh yeah, <laughs> that can be your commander though. We were looking, we're trying to look at planeswalkers that can't be your commander. That can't. Hughes, like what, like Nissa, Vital Force. But thanks for the suggestion anyway. <laughs> that thing, that thing already can be your commander, so it's already balanced. Nissa, Vital Force, green, green, three generic for five loyalty, plus one tap. I'm sorry, untap target land you control. It's a five, five elemental with haste. Then minus three, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. And minus six, you get an emblem with whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. So basically, basically Tatiova's ability. Why don't you just play Tatiova if you want that, if you want that juicy emblem. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control. And Tatiova gives you life on top of it. Burning Paper Sun. Karn Liberated or Grist. So we looked at Karn already, and apparently it's disgusting because you can just keep resetting the game over and over again. Uh, or at least resetting the game once to peeve everyone off. But Grist was not chosen yet. So green, black, uh, one generic. As long as Grist to the Hunger Tide isn't on the battlefield, it's a... Uh... Hold on, can't this already be your commander? This can already be your commander. I think this... We're going to disqualify this one. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken... Because I made this mistake before, thinking you couldn't play this as your commander, but it's it's literally a creature. Because it's not in the... Uh, yeah, Gris can already be your commander. By the rules of the EDH gods, or the EDH lords. I'm sorry, the EDH elders. Gris can absolutely be your commander. Kettle Black with Dakon Shadow Slayer. Thanks so much for the super chat, by the way. Back on Shadow Slayer, black, blue, white, so we're in the Esper colors. Enters the battlefield with a number of loyalty counters on him equal to the number of lands you control. Plus one, surveil two. Minus three, exile target creature. And minus six, you may put an artifact card from your hand on or graveyard onto the battlefield. I think this would be a sick commander. That actually, when we, this would be pretty good. You would have like a lot of mana. So it like, enters the battlefield with a number of loyalty counters on him equal to the number of lands you control. Oh, so it needs to be lands. But I think you can get the lands out anyway. You'll make it work. And it just gets... And as you have to pay that commander tax, it just becomes a bigger and bigger planeswalker. In the late game, this thing would be sick. And then minus six, just combo off with it somehow. Uh, Arentis, did anyone mention a format like Oathbreaker? A format where planeswalker and instance or sorceries are commanders? Yeah, someone mentioned it. But we're just looking at if we could play regular planeswalkers at your commander. That's it. And in regular commander, no spells, no spells allowed. 
no secret Oathbreaker spell. Just out of curiosity, like, is Oathbreaker a broken format? Like, what is the best Planeswalker in Oathbreaker? Just out of curiosity. Uh, Trio, Calyx, Destiny's Hand. Okay, maybe we'll just look up Calyx. There we go. Calyx, Destiny's Hand. White, green, two generic, four loyalty. Uh, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an enchantment. Oh, you like Enchantress, do you? Uh, put that card into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So basically, impulse every time. For impulse for enchantments. Minus three, exile target creature or enchantment you don't control until target enchantment you control leaves the battlefield. Exile target. So we basically, something goes to jail. So every, it's, it's in some weird way, it turns everything into an oblivion ring. And then minus seven, return all enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Holy moly. Holy replenish, Batman. Narset and wheel in hand always. Yeah, that sounds pretty broken for Oathbreaker. Ren and Six might be the strongest in Oathbreaker. That sounds like a really poopy Planeswalker, to be honest. We had to stop playing Oathbreaker because the format is so easily broken. Yeah, I'm guessing Narset plus, like, Time Twister has got to be, like, the ultimate broken combo. But, I mean, I don't know. I don't know for sure. Pull idea. Are you running Luxior with your Planeswalker commander? Um, what's Luxior again? Luxior. Guide as gift. Equip creature gets plus one plus one for each counter on it. Equip permanent isn't a Planeswalker. It is a creature in addition to its other types. This is a weird card. But you need creatures to protect it in an enchantment deck question mark. Yeah. Well, I mean, you play... Wait, what are you gonna... You're gonna play your, um... What can we play in the green and white identity? Uh, Ghostly Prison. We can play our Ghostly Prison. What else can we play? Uh, does Solemnity work? So, so hold on. Solemnity plus, uh, what's it called? Hold on, how does Solemnity work? Solemnity. Can you break that with Planeswalkers? Players can't get counters. Counters can't be put on artifact creatures and enchantments or land. That eh, doesn't affect the Planeswalkers. I'm sure there's Marari's Wake. Does that help protect our poor planeswalker? Uh, creatures control get plus one plus one whenever you tap a land for mana. Add one mana. Uh, I don't see how that helps. There are so many enchantment creatures in those colors too. Yeah, I'm sure they'll figure out a way. So be no problem to protect the Calyx. Uh, I'm not missing any super chats, am I? I do not think so. Okay, uh, we've got Alex, Luminar Cassette. No, that's not a Planeswalker. But yes, you could use that to protect the Planeswalker. The Ascension would work. Okay, we've got you, you, Ecure, Adian, <laughs> with uh, Lolth, Spider Queen, Adian. Okay, so black, black, three generic for a fo It looks like an Eldrazi to me. Um, four loyalty plane, four loyalty lolth, lol, if you know what I mean. Uh, whenever a creature you control dies, put a loyalty counter on lolth spider queen, zero, you draw a card and you lose one life, minus three, create two, two, one black spider creature tokens with menace and reach, and then minus eight, you get an emblem with whenever an opponent is dealt combat damage by one or more creatures you control, if that player lost less than eight life this turn, they lose life equal to the difference. So you're definitely losing at least eight life whenever you're getting dealt combat damage. And whenever a creature you control dies, put a, put more loyalty on this thing. And then you get to draw cards and lose life for nothing. Not bad. Great, Christopher with Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Now, I have a question. How easy or hard is it to play a deck like... Is, like, this going to be an Eldrazi deck? Because it's going to be colorless. You don't get access to nothing. I mean, you're going to have the Mana Rocks, I guess. There's some Mana Rocks you can't... Like, in, in an Ugin the Spear Dragon, can you use, like, Chrome Mocks? By any chance? Like, I'm just curious about the complications of using a, a generic colorless decks. Tommy Sin's like, colorless decks build themselves. 
Chrome Mox. When Chrome Mox enters the battlefield, you may exile a non artifact, non line card from your hand. Add one man of any of the exiled card's colors. But colorless cards have no color. Right? So, like, you can't. You, there's some cards you can't use. You'd have to, like, use Mox Diamond and other RAM. I mean, whatever. There's a lot of RAM cards. You're, you're gonna still use your Soul Rings and your uh, um, Mana Crypts and so on. Yeah, that's what I thought, David. Chromox doesn't do anything in... Like, so what do you do? Like, how do you build around this card? I mean, it's a powerful card. Ugin is amazing. It's got this minus X that wipes the board. And uh, and also an ultimate that's not anything to be sneezed at either. And the plus two is pretty good. It's Well, it's not bad. Urza lands. Rocks and lands. That That's it? Like, what else are you going to put in it? Colorless works, but it's not crazy. Like, I meant, you gotta, like, throw millions of artifacts. You're, like, mono artifact, mono Eldrazi deck. And you can play, there's some good cards. You have other board wipes, like, all is dust and stuff, so I could see it working. But it sounds like you're just gonna be using, like, there's not a lot of variety. You just gotta, like, jam the best artifacts and colorless spells. Helm of Awakening effects, Mystic, Mystic Forge is a good one. Mystic Forge is great. I feel that Ugin the Ineffable would be way more busted. The Ineffable could be color spells. Yeah, you could be right here. I mean, it's more, it's more, it's a better way to abuse the cards that you want to cast. Sort of like affinity here. So minus six color spells you ca uh, cast cost two less to cast. Plus one, exile the top card of your library face down. Look at it. And look at it. You have to look at it. It says you have to look at it. That's such a weird thing. It's like, <laughs> exile the top card of your library face down and look at it. Create a 2-2 colorless spirit creature token. When that token leaves the battlefield, put the exile card into your hand. What if I don't look at it? Can someone call the judge on me? I'm just not going to look at this card. Hey, you didn't look at that card. You have to. The card says so. You need to know that information. And then so I can look at your face and try to decipher if it's a good card or not. You must look at it. Anyway, maybe I'm looking at this too deep. And in minus three, destroy a target permanent. That's one or more colors. Oh yeah, dice factory cards. This would be pretty, yeah, color spells you cost to cast, two last to cast. So like, there's a lot of cards. So this plus Mystic Forge looks pretty busted, in my opinion. Yeah, judge, they didn't look. They have to look. The card says so. Anyway, interesting, interesting idea. Uh, Dovin, Grand Arbiter. <laughs> they have this formatted already. It's called Oathbreaker. You also get a spell in your command zone. Yeah, but we're gonna look, explore. I, so I guess we're exploring Oathbreaker in some sense. But without the spell, you're not allowed to combo with the spell. You gotta dig for that spell if you want to. Okay. Oh, with that, hold on. Is Oathbreakers in in some ways Oathbreaker solved with hold on Jace, Wielder, Jace and uh, Paradigm Shift. Like, isn't is this just solved? You Paradigm Shift away your deck, and then you play your Jace. I don't know. Maybe it isn't. That would be that would be my combo though. Dovin, Grand Arbiter, blue, white, one generic, three, uh, three loyalty. Until end of turn, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a loyalty counter on Dovin, Grand Arbiter. How lovely! Whenever a creature you control deals combat, well that's easy. So what's the ultimate? Look at the top ten cards of your library. Put three of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. That's broken. That's really easy to pull off too. And then, what's the minus one? Create a 1-1 one, one colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying. You gain a life. What a crappy ability. The other ones are great. Until end of turn, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player. Like, any creature. Oh, you only put one loyalty counter. Put a loyalty counter. I thought it's like a cumulative for every creature that deals damage. Whenever a, whenever a creature. So, if like you attack with 20 creatures, you only get one. Ah, I got excited for a second. 
Yeah, like play Dovin plus one next turn. Well, n well, apparently not. If I'm understanding this correctly, we just plus one, we attack, and we just get another one, so it goes to five. It is it is it broken as I thought it was? Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, or does each one get a trigger? Oh, it is still one for each. Oh, so whenever a cr okay, so it is whenever I attack with like twenty creatures, they'll all get this trigger and put a loyalty counter. Okay, that's great. Then it's broken. This is completely broken. Dovin does get multiple because it doesn't have the S. Yeah, it's it's a whenever. Interesting. This would be a great this would be a great planeswalker. I mean, you gotta play with creatures in your deck, and then if you look seven cartons deep it's probably just gonna be a bunch of creatures anyway but whatever will anderson on this uh jace wilder of mysteries thing jace wilder of mysteries just have your instant win con available from the command zone so i i mean uh yeah we're not exploring oathbreaker today just generic cards but i would imagine in oathbreaker this is does this solve the format unless it's hard to cast your jace wing of shoe with the super chat any five color commanders? I like my door to nothing. Um, what is a five color commander for for Wing of Shoe? I don't know any. Can't think of anything at the moment. Jer oh, Jared. Oops, what's going on here? Jared. There we go, Jared uh, Carthalian. The one it makes is this? Oh no, there, it's a different Jared that makes uh, what's it called? But it can already be your commander. So there you go. I have some good news for you, Wing of Shoe. You can play this card, and it's it can already be your commander. Go play your Jared. It creates three three cavus and everything. And for that reason, this thing is squal disqualified. It's already a commander. Oh, right, Urza. <laughs> Academy Headmaster, the meme card. The meme card. Okay, we got Chris here with uh, Teferi, Master of Time. Teferi. Oh. This one would be so annoying. So this one's really easy to get out. Turn to Teferi, no problem. And you can activate abilities of Teferi, Master of Time on any player's turn, anytime you could cast an instant. So you keep drawing, you keep looting on your opponent's turns over and over again. So what? how does it work? Turn two, you get this out. Plus one, so you go to four. Then your opponent, five, six, seven. Then your turn, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And then you go minus ten on your turn. So you, as long as you keep plusing this damn thing. Sounds like an absolute pain. Of course, you could phase things out if you want to. Yeah. I don't need any. I don't need to hear your answer, Siri. I don't care. I was, wasn't talking to you. I was talking to Teferi. So Teferi is just broken as a commander. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the most disgusting one. And of course I can... And you were looting the entire time, by the way. So, like, I've looted, like, eight cards to get to where I am. Uh, we've got, uh... Beanpot. A Johnny Vengeance. A Johnny... This one's, oh, is this the Armageddon one? White, red, two generic, three loyalty, plus one target permit doesn't untap. Uh, minus two deals, it's a lightning helix, and minus seven, destroy all lands, target, oh, target player controls. Ouch! So you get to target somebody. It's a super feel bad card. Hmm, who at the table? Who at the table has been peeving me off? I'm going to choose you to lose all your lands. Siri likes tier zero planeswalkers. Yeah, that's right. Or I shouldn't say Siri. The the S I R I. She's very sensitive. Shut up. <laughs> Did anyone hear that? The Siri's great, except when you don't need her. Uh, okay. Who? Uh, you know, I'm looking for somebody that hasn't gotten a chance. Uh, I don't know if Diego got a chance. Garrick, Cursed Huntsman. Garrick. Cursed. Oh, this is, one, this is the Golgari one, right? 
black, green, four generic, five loyalty, Garrick. Uh, zero. Create two, two, two black, a green wolf creature tokens with whenever this creature dies put a loyalty counter on each gear on each garrick you control that is so weird on each garrick so it is implying that you can have multiple garricks on the battlefield at the same time it's just li like you know garrick from the future is allowed to be be uh interacting with garrick from the past whatever Minus three, destroy target creature, draw a card. And minus six, you get an emblem with creatures you control. Get plus three, plus three, and half trample. Pretty weak emblem, if you ask me. <laughs> what? Someone's laughing about killing his lands? You're next. That's right, they're the Ajani Vengeant. Gonna get you. Uh, Armageddon with uh, Luca. Or Luca? I don't know. How does anyone pronounce this one? Luca or Lucca? That's got to be a poll. Luca. Uh, I like saying Luca. Just so, I just think it sounds better. Uh, Coffer Coat Outcast. Red, red, three generic, five loyalty. Plus one, exile the top three cards of your library. Creatures, creature cards exiled this way. Gain, you may cast this card from exile as long as you control a Luca Planeswalker. Minus two, exile target creature you control, then reveal cards on the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mat cost put onto the battlefield and the, and the rest are put on the bottom of your library in a random order. Basically, you know, it's a, it's a polymorph card. Polymorph card. Mr. Deadhead likes it. Great Planeswalker. Nicobolus, Dragon God. Uh, I believe we did that one. I think we did this one already. Oh, we didn't actually. We didn't. We did the other. There's a lot of Nicobolus Planeswalkers. All right. For a red. Uh, thank you very much, Demon. Uh, for a red, black, 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 blue. You can see he's much dark. He, he's a lot more black than he is red and blue. Uh, can Nicol Bolas, Dragon God, has all loyalty abilities of all other Planeswalkers on the battlefield. Plus one, you draw a card. Each opponent exiles a card from their hand or permanent they control. Minus three, destroy target creature or Planeswalker. And minus eight, uh, each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or Planeswalker loses the game. Ouch! Each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or Planeswalker. <laughs> keep your, keep your commanders on the battlefield, people. Or you're going to get wiped out by Nicol Bolas. And you get to play with the Grixis colors. Those are dangerous colors in Commander. Very dangerous. What are the weird stuff? We got Henrik with the Wandering Emperor. The Wandering Emperor! Not to be expen- Not to be, uh... This was the Wanderer, right? This was the OG Wanderer. Does anyone remember? Oh, okay, let's go to the Wanderer. Does anyone remember the Wanderer? The crazy theories that this was uh, Emrakul? Like, people thought this was an Eldrazi. Like, you can't see them. They're secretly an Eldrazi. Because it prevent. It was like. Because it had this crazy ability. Minus two. Exile target creature with power four or greater. Who could do that? Well, only the Eldrazis could do that. Prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you and other permanents you control. It, you know what it would have sold the theory even better is if it was something to the effect of like you can't, you can't sack creature, you can't like so long as it's on the battlefield you can't sack permanents or something like that. I mean the hat does kind of look like Emrakul. The hat? Is that was that another theory? Oh, the hat. I you know I never heard of that one before, but that makes sense. The theory was that this was you as a planeswalker? Oh, I didn't hear that theory either. That's a cool one. Yeah, this is you. Sometimes you're like, there's some hidden character in the game that has no distinguished name. You find out that that's actually you the entire time. Rumor had it was the Wanderer was Urza. Okay, turns out there's a lot of rumors around what the who the Wanderer was. Anyway, it was all disclosed. In Neon Dynasty, you are the Emperor, the Emperor that wanders around. So instead of, uh, aren't you supposed? Are you the Emperor supposed to like lead your city? So white, white, two generic, three loyalty as Flash. Oh, this card is so annoying in in Pioneer. I hate this card. People often flash this thing in and screw with my creatures. 
As long as the Wandering Emperor, uh, as long as the Wandering Emperor entered the battlefield this turn, you may activate her loyalty abilities anytime you could cast an instant. So basically, you can just flash this in at the end of your opponent's turn. Plus one, put a counter on up to one target creature, gains first strike until end of turn, and uh, minus one, create a two-two white samurai creature token with vigilance, and minus two, uh, exile target tapped creature, you gain two life. Actually, a very frustrating planeswalker. I hate playing against this in Pioneer. Gives big edge to the control decks. Arakusus, sorry, Ar Arakus, Arakusu. Maybe the Wanderer is the friends we've made all along. That's right. It was the friends we made all along. Yeah, that friend exiled my cre. <laughs> then that friend exiled my creature. Hey, what are friends for? Can I have Deathrite Shaman count as a Planeswalker? No. Not technically a Planeswalker. Okay, Abzo, Liliana Dreadhorde General. The General! Uh, black, black, four generic. Uh, whenever a creature you control dies, draw a card. Wow, this is amazing! This would be amazing, Planeswalker. Six loyalty, plus one, create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token, minus four, each player sacrifices two creatures. Holy god, that's, I mean, that's basically a board wipe for most people. And then minus nine, each opponent chooses a permanent, they control of each permanent type and sacrifices the rest. You didn't read it? What did I, what did I not read? Maybe the Wanderer is the friends we made all along. That friend exile my creature then. What did I not read? Oh, the wanderer got people talking? I don't know. Oh, whatever. Okay. Uh, anyway, Liliana Dreadhorde uh, General. Not bad. No, I think that was a good one. Anyway, so uh, that's going to be it for Coffin MTG today. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the ch I hope you enjoyed the chat and by the way if you want to join those chats you got to be here Monday to Friday 8 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time also account for me being late because I'm basically late every single day the coffee crew knows and thanks so much for your support your super chats people who are members on YouTube and also patrons on patreon links to support the channel in the description below but your super chats mean a lot and lets me know that you love the coffee and MTG and you want to be not only part of the show but I got to be here for you guys so that we have this show every morning but most importantly, I got to thank all of you for being here. If for you being part of Coffee and MTG, being part of the Coffee Crew, because well, you guys have got nothing. I'm a com this. I'd be all washed up. The show would be pointless without all of you. You guys are the show. Show so keep bringing up those coffees, and we will keep bringing up the magic. Take care of yourselves.